Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. Good morning, Crossroads. My name is Marcus. I'm lead pastor. Pastor Joel will be back in a couple of weeks. He is out somewhere. I don't even know where he's at. He's in Guatemala, I think. But he's out traveling with his spouse and some friends. So be praying for him. Also, I want to just I need a prayer request from you guys, just as a family. Um, I need you to pray for my my. This week, I'm getting some injections, and my my back's been just messing up bad. So I just need some prayer on uh, on y'all's behalf. Is that okay? And I don't care if I come back in a wheelchair. I'm still going to come back and preach the gospel and share the message and love on you guys. But I'm just going through a little season where it's just very, very painful. And to God be the glory, it says, in everything, give thanks. Not for everything, but in everything. You still rejoice, right? Still move forward. And that's exactly what the Apostle Paul is talking about here in Philippians. He finds himself in a jail cell, but yet it's, he's not moved by the circumstances. He's sitting there full of joy and encouraging the Philippians to just, man, work out this fully manifested life inside. Work it out so that people can, uh, can experience Jesus. And so we're going to take a look at that this morning. Pastor Joel did a great job last week. And I want to take a look at a verse that really kind of provoked me. And it's really, a, it's really almost a life verse, I wish I could say, because this particular passage in this one sentence, two sentences has really helped me in my walk with Christ. One of the most common questions as a believer that we hear often is, how do I know God's will? Anybody ever want to know God's will for their lives? Two of y'all. Okay, good. I don't know about the rest of y'all. I, I've always wanted to know God's will, but I didn't know how, how do I find God's will? How, how do I know God's will? Well, don't overlook, overlook, overlook. What, I'm just, I'm just tired. I'm sorry. Uh, um, don't overlook what I'm going to share with you this morning. It'll be small doses, and it'll be not even subtle. It'll be simple, but it's so simple you'll miss it. Okay, so we'll take a look at verse 12 in chapter 2. Uh, what did I put on here? Number one question. Oh, yes. Okay, good. Let's go to verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out. Say work out. Work out your own salvation, not your wife's salvation, not your uncle's salvation, not your girlfriend's salvation. Quit acting that way. You're supposed to behave this Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, not like trepidy, not like a scared, but just honor and respect. Why? Because God is demanding from us uh, um, a lifestyle that reflects the character and nature of our Heavenly Father. It's important for us. You remember, you're a pilgrim. Remember, you're a sojourner. You're just traveling through this earth. Like, no, I, I, want, I, want, I want something better. That's fine. But you're just here traveling to, through this earth to reflect God's character and nature so that people can be drawn to him. That's why we're here. That's our sole purpose. And I know that may sound like, poof, like, oh, man, I just, I just dropped the mic. No, that's why we're here. When you have heaven's perspective and you understand that you're a pilgrim, just traveling through, nothing that this earth tries to offer you will entice you enough to pull you away from him. It's important. That's why he says, you know, when he tells the rich man, hey, sell everything that you have and go give it. Why? Because uh, something had him other than him. Because let go of anything that doesn't have, that, that keeps you and prevents you from holding on to me, let that go. It's not worth having. <sighs> yes, get rid of that boyfriend. Yes, some of these things are not good for us, right? And it's not only for our future's sake, it's for those that we're going to be accompanying in the future also. We have no clue. We have no idea. Our simple obedience of yes, one simple yes of obedience, what it would do not only for you, but for those that are around you. People are watching us constantly. The Apostle Paul is encouraging them here in this particular verse. He goes, hey, listen. God did a work. Whenever I went and visited you, I thought I was going to go to another place. I wound up going through three or four different uh, doors that closed, and I wound up in Philippi, and your hearts opened up, so I'm preaching to you. He goes, and you obeyed, and your life's being transformed. There's a church that's established, and now I'm encouraging you to keep that up. Keep that up. Keep living your life in such a way that it reflects God's character and nature. I'm in prison, and if I die for the sake of you being fruitful, don't be sad about with me. He goes, I'm rejoicing because that's my role. That's what I do. That's why I'm here on this earth. And there's so much freedom 
when your life's purpose and your family's purpose is to pursue God's will and to honor him while we're here on this earth. It's just a beautiful thing. It really is. And so Paul's here, um, and I stopped. When I started studying this, I stopped right here, therefore. Because whenever you see a therefore in Scripture, you have to find out what it's there for. And so I had to go back to verses 1 through 11. And verses 1 through 11, I'm not going to read them. We already talked about them. But it's basically describing how we are, how the Apostle Paul was, uh, well, I just said it, where, where he was ministering to the church at Philippi. And he's saying, hey, work this out. Yield to this. Work this out. Now, let me ask, let me say this. You can't work out something that's never been worked in. If, if he's saying work out your salvation, that means that something's already inside so that we have the opportunity to work something out. Well, the word salvation comes a lot of other things with it. The word salvation is also includes the blessings of healing, deliverance, preservation, and, and rescuing. All that's inclusive and, and more. And so... When, he makes, when we said yes to Jesus, when we said, man, Father, I'm just going to yield myself. I'm a, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. I want to be a follower of him. I'm sold out to him. Right there in that moment, boom, salvation comes. All the package, everything that we need for this life is within us. Now we are to try to match the outside flesh with what's already happened on the inside. And that is a war constantly. That's a tug that's constantly a struggle. That's, there's always contention there, right, with our flesh. Why? Because our flesh doesn't want to forgive. Our flesh doesn't want to be patient. Shut up, boys. I told you already. Our flesh doesn't want to do these things. Want to, no, we, we, don't, we don't want to do those things. It's easier for us to, to, to maintain a fleshly mindset and a fleshly lifestyle in the name of instant gratification. But if I stop doing this, I'll... I won't experience this anymore. Little do you know that if you stop doing this, there's so much more you'll experience. But you'll never find out until you obey this. It's important for us to have active obedience. Active obedience. Just say yes. That's a common thing that I say, guys, all the time. Just say yes. What if I, what if, what if, what if I, don't, I don't know if it's, if it's him speaking. It's like, well, what if it is speaking? Just say yes. And yield yourself and get used to learning and listening to the Spirit of God. You know, he comes in whispers. Do you know that? Sometimes there's an audible voice, sometimes, but that's not what we're looking for. But we know that the same, what Jesus was to the disciples while he was on this earth, he sent someone just like him with the same attributes. Parakletos is the word in Greek. It's the Holy Spirit who comes to live inside of us. And what Jesus was to those disciples as he led and guided them on this earth, the Holy Spirit is to us as we navigate here on this earth by the Spirit of God. And just as clear as Jesus spoke to those disciples, the Holy Spirit speaks just as clear to you. How do I know? I don't get that. Is it a feeling? No, it's not a feeling. And that's where people get hung up. They think it's a feeling. You are a spirit. You have a soul mind, intellect, and emotion, and you live in a body. Some of you guys love your body. Some of you guys don't like your body. But you are a spirit being. That's the emphasis. I'm a spirit. I remember I used to have a confession. I ought to bring it back out when I was 20 years old. I made a confession, a, a declaration of who I am. I'm a spirit. I live in this flesh. I, you know, I have a soul. Your soul is your mind, intellect, and emotion, and your soul is constantly siding in. It's siding in with your spirit. The Spirit of God is pulling on you and saying, yeah, forgive. Yes, let that go. Yes, stop doing that or whatever. And, and, and the flesh is constantly saying, oh, you don't need to do that. Do that next week. Now, oh, forget them. He deserves that. Let them go to prison. Who cares? And on and on. So our, our soul is siding in. When Jesus created man, all the human capacity was there. And it says he, so the flesh was there. There's no life in him. All of a sudden, the breath of life comes. And then man becomes a living soul. And that soul now is the determining factor whether you're going to walk in the spirit or you're going to fulfill the lust of your flesh. Yeah. And so when Paul is talking about here, he's saying, listen, work out your salvation. Work it out, dude. Work it out. Jesus worked it out. The, Holy, uh, the apostle Paul worked it out. Do you know that Jesus 
had to learn obedience? Jesus learned obedience through suffering. If Jesus had to learn obedience, you, ha- you and I have to learn obedience. Right. <clears throat> Except he obeyed always. <laughs> sometimes we obey and sometimes we want to obey, but it's too hard, so we just stop. It's like, ah, I'm not going to do that. And the next thing you know, we'll come back around a month later or a year later at the same spot. It's like, I didn't tell you you need to obey that. You need to forgive that, them. And that's how he works. And so he's, he's prompting us on the inside of our spirit and we are to yield ourselves. Next thing you know, the, manifest, the, manifest, the manifested beauty of Jesus. When we live our lives in such a way, all of a sudden people see something that they don't see very often. It's somebody living their life reflecting God's character and nature on this earth. You know, it's the goodness of God that leads a man to repentance. It's God's goodness, not his punishment, not his harshness. It's God's goodness. When people see your goodness, they see something they don't often see. It's important for them to see that, and it's important for us to yield ourselves to that. So we stay tender, so we stay soft, so we stay yielding, so we stay in a, in a position to, 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 to honor God and to, to allow him to use us for his name's sake while we're on this earth. Amen. Little bitty yeses lead to amazing and tremendous adventures in our walk with Jesus. I love that about him. And so that's exactly what he's talking about. Salvation, work, work this out. You and I, Natalie and I, have been working um, this walk out for the last, gosh, I don't know how many years, 40 years plus. And by the grace of God, you are experiencing what Natalie and I have worked out. Pastor Jeremiah, all the guys up here, they have worked out their musicianship. They've, they've, they've honed in on all these things, and, and they're just living this out. They're working this out, and they're, they're creating something, an experience for us to enjoy and experience ourselves. We are experiencing, we are benefiting from what they've worked out. And so it is with you, as you work this out in your heart, as the Spirit, you yield to the Spirit of God, you yield to His promptings, you say yes to the, the, the next thing. You, you're working this out. And guess what? Your family or those friends or whoever it is that are around you, they will benefit from that. They'll benefit in such tremendous ways. Sometimes we have no idea. It's like, hey, I've been watching you. It's like, man, dude, how, how, what? What's, what's wrong with you? It's like, what's, you're different. I remember guys, ex-drug addict and doing, you know, selling dope and stuff like that. And they would come back and say, Marcus, what, dude, what's wrong with you? It's like, I don't know, man. He goes, I, I just, I looked in this Bible and something happened and I just want to help people see Jesus. He goes, okay, no more power to you. I said, do you want some dope? I got tons of dope. You can have it. I don't want it. I used to have bags and bags and bags and then I got saved and the police were like, dude, what happened to you? It's like, I don't know. Jesus happened to me. I got addicted to something different. He goes, you can have the dope if you want to. No, I said, I'll arrest you. I said, no, 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 don't do that. But that's what we do. We're experiencing these things. Bill and Denise, some of you guys have gone through the marriage, re-engaged. A lot of you guys have experienced re-engaged. Well, Bill and Denise have worked those principles out in their lives by the Spirit of God. You become a beneficiary. You, be, you benefit from that as you go through those classes. And that's exactly what takes place. The number one question is, how do I know God's will? Don't make it so complicated. Remember, when Jesus... Um, commissioned the disciples. He didn't give them an education. He didn't give them a Bible. He didn't give them a diploma. He didn't give them a devotional or a journal or a pen. What did Jesus give them? He gave them love because we need love. We need to know that we are loved. Love is what helps us to understand the value that we have from him. It helps us to remain secure That's why when the Lord told me to come back to Seguin and tell people how much I love them, that told me immediately your worth and the value, the common common, uh, mindset of a person's identity is weak in this area. And so for 17 years, we've been talking about the love of God, helping people understand and get secure in the love of God. Listen, he's not mad at you. He loves you. He's got a great plan for your life. Yeah, you messed up, but get back up because he's still working in you. He's still working in your life. Just get back up. Forgive. Shake the dust off your feet. Keep on going. It's too important. Your future's at stake. Your children's future's at stake. Get back up. Rise up. Does that make sense? So over and over again, he provided his love to help us become secure and have great worth. Like I say all the time, I'm his favorite Mexican pastor. I am. (laughs) 
And I believe that. Then he gives us his grace. What's grace? Grace is unmerited favor. Grace is God's ability to do what you can't do in and of yourself. You have, you know, a couple here. How many guys love your spouse if you're married? How many guys, um, how do I say this? I don't like you right now, but I love you forever. Sometimes you don't like them. How many, how many times? Anybody there? No, nobody? They get you so mad. It's like, oh, I just hate it. Like, oh, get, get them out of the house. Now, why am I saying that? <laughs> the grace of God is God's ability inside of us, inside of your spirit, that he already placed in there when you got saved, that helps you say, Leroy, I'm, I'm sorry. What did you say? Let me record it. Let me have a, I'm sorry. Man, something happens. When we yield ourselves to the spirit of God in those moments, in the, in the tense moments, when we're letting our pride down and we humble ourselves before God and for the people, something breaks. Something breaks. Something becomes very pliable, real soft. And you're not these Christians that grow up 20, 30 years and they're mean as snakes. Anybody ever seen Christians like that? They're mean? Don't be that. How do you do that? Keep yielding. Keep saying yes. And if you mess up, just get back up. Keep on going. He's not mad at you. You know, when guys betray me, and I've had tons of them, and, and guys have offended me in, in church, I'm always getting the opportunity to be offended. I, don't, I choose not to put a face to those things. It's the enemy trying to distract me. He's, he's putting bait out there so that I can take this bait. You know what the word bait means in, in the Greek? Scandalon. You know what the picture, the word picture is? The word picture is that of a, you know those old boxes? Like if you were going to trap a, a rabbit or a fox or something or a squirrel, you put those boxes up on a stick and they put the bait right there. That's the word scandal on. And all of a sudden, he's enticing you to take the bait. When you take the bait and you walk in unforgiveness and you hold the root of bitterness in or whatever it is that God's dealing with you, you hold fast to that, not good for you. You'll have to, you'll have to go to that place again. But that's what it means. That's, that's, actually even, that's actually even understanding how to know God's will. Because God's will works the same way. When he speaks to us, he, when, Natalie, when he told us, he goes, I want you to go back home and start Crossroads Church. It was the same as if though he was saying, hey, I need you to go down to pick and pack and go speak to this man. It was not anything different. Except that for the last 20-something years, I had been saying yes to these things. So all of a sudden, when he says, go back home and start a church, it's not that big of a deal other than I didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't want to come back to Seguin. But we know that Christianity is not like a, a democracy where we get to vote. Christianity is a kingdom. And we have a king, and when the king speaks, we obey. And if that's the heart behind how you want to follow Christ, man, I'm telling you, you're, you're in for some great and mighty adventures in your life. I have never... Man, there's just so many beautiful things that take place when you yield yourself to him. And that's exactly what he wants, just full obedience. But he's working inside of you. It's not that difficult. There's a prompting going on inside of you. When Pastor Joel, the reason why Pastor Joel showed up is because I was in a place where I was so tired. I was so burned out. And I knew better, but I, I didn't have the help or I didn't recruit the help. And so I was so burned out that I told him, I was like, man, I've got, I've got to take some, I don't know how to take a break. And the Spirit of God even said, Marcus, you need to rest, take three months off. It's like, I want to, but how? How do I do that? And then across another area, a few cities down the road, Pastor Joel, or Joel then, because he's not a pastor. <laughs> Joel was sitting there, and the Spirit of God speaks to him. He goes, I need you to call Marcus because I want you to help him for the rest of this year. So I get a phone call while I'm praying, when I'm seeking God, saying, man, God, I need to rest. I need to do, I don't know what to do here. I get a phone call from a Joel. I was like, dude, where are you? I haven't heard from you in forever. He goes, I got to have dinner with you. I got to have something to say to you. So we have the dinner. He goes, this is a weird thing. He goes, but, I, you know, I don't know if this is God or not. He goes, but I feel like he told me to come and help you for the next, the rest of this year that, that I'm yours because you need some help. And, man, I just wept. I just wept. Tears coming off into my spaghetti and meatballs. And <laughs> I'm like, dude, you have no idea. He goes, okay, you're it. I'm taking off. We'll see you in three months. 
And that's kind of what happened for those of you that were here. So, but that little prompting, all I'm saying is that he didn't know if that was God's will or not, but it was God's will. And look what's, how we benefit. Now, we have an associate pastor who's just an amazing communicator, Pastor Jeremiah. And then he comes up. He goes, hey, I think I found a worship pastor. I'm like, where? He goes, he's my neighbor. That's where Pastor Jeremiah comes in. A simple obedience has totally changed the trajectory of this church the last seven years. He does the same for you. If you just listen, pay attention, and say yes, okay. You, we, we want to say yes, but we also want to know what the answer is going to be or what the results are going to be. I have Leroy and Rachel here, and, and, and I'm seeing this working out in a lot of you guys. Uh, if I don't mention your name, I'm sorry. But I see, you know, these guys are going to start a business in town. Uh, what is it, a running shoe? Is it running? What is it? Running, it's a running store. You go, if you want to run, go to the store and you'll run over there. No, I'm just kidding. It's a, it's a running store. A bunch of shoes. So they have, God deposited something in their spirit. And they're just yielding to that. They probably don't even know. I don't know if this is God or not. I'm just going to do it. And you watch. But that's how God works. He just drops deposits. It says if you delight yourself in him, he will deposit the desires in your heart. When God wants to do mighty things, he gives a man a vision. You know why? Because people without a vision perish. People without a vision, the scripture says, run wild. You, if you feel aimless, you feel like you don't know what to do, you don't know your purpose, it's because you have no vision. And the way to get a vision is to get with Jesus, is to get with God, get with the Spirit of God. He will make a deposit. He will, gra he will grace you with vision. And the vision is just not for you. It's for those that he knows that you will influence and impact. So we have to obey. It's important for us to obey. When I first came to Christ, wow, is it 1146 already? Praise God. When I first came to Christ, I wasn't seeking. I didn't know anything about God's will. I didn't know anything about what the Spirit of God, how he speaks or any of that. I grew up in a Catholic church. I was raised a Catholic, got witnessed to by Jehovah Witnesses, read a, a Baptist Bible, and became charismatic. That's how crazy that was. <clears throat> what was I saying? <laughs> What'd you say? What'd you say? What, what was I saying? You don't remember? Yes. I was raised in a Catholic church. I'm sorry, I'm tired. That's my excuse today. But man, something happened on the inside when we first got saved. About three days later, I mean, an explosion took place on the inside. All I heard was a voice that says, I want you to go down to Faith's Way. It's a little Christian bookstore. There's a book I want you to read. There's a person I want you to meet. I'm like, I don't, I don't think like that. I told Natalie, she goes, what's wrong with you? You're crazy. It's like, I feel crazy. He goes, but let's go see if that's the Lord or not. So we did. And sure enough, I found a book. It just felt like it popped out of the shelf. It's a book called I Went to Hell by Brother Hagen. little mini book. Little did I know in reading that book, a deposit was made in my spirit. And a few years later, I would be at this man's Bible school in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. That's how I got to Bible school, was from that simple obedience. The man walks in through the door, and I don't know who this man is. All I know is his name is Joe Montoya, for those of you who know him. But Joe is an old Catholic brother who was a truck driver. He walks through those doors, walks through the shelves and the aisles. He comes up to me as if though he knew me all my life. Brother, I love you. He was like, who are you, dude? I don't even know who you are. This man wound up becoming the most influential man in my early walk with Jesus. Uh, he's the reason why I'm outreach-centric, because he was always reaching out. He was, all, brother, we've got to go clothe the people. We've got to go feed the people. We've got to. I'm like, man, okay, this guy had so much passion to reach the lost, to reach the hungry, to reach the hurting. He just, man, it just kind of spilled over me, and it still continues today still continues. Why? Because active obedience is necessary for long-term effectiveness in ministry. It really is. Yielding, yielding, yielding. Just saying yes to the little things. Saying yes to the running store. Saying yes to the building. Saying, saying yes to the stupid fire hydrant that's $275,000. Like, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to do that, but you said to do this, so I, this is your deal. It's not my deal. And so I'm just being patient 
being patient because believe me, I want to do like take matters into your own hands. And I can't do that. Why? Because it's not my deal. It's his deal. It's his timing too. But there's folks in here. Uh, I just met, um, I, not, I just uh, talked to, uh, what's his name? Um, Michael Chase, who's a doctor here. Just a, just a few months ago, over a year ago, he didn't really know what he was supposed to be doing. I was like, dude, you are a healer, man. You've got a gift to minister to people. You gotta, you gotta lean into that gift. And so now he's got a full-blown lab and God's just using him. He's just got tremendous favor right now and God's using him. But it was just a simple obedience to provoke him. Like, hey, stay on this path. This is who you are. And all of a sudden, that little idea, him yielding to that has brought fruit in his life for God knows maybe the rest of his life. And it can happen the same way with you. What's he telling you to do? What's he, who's he telling you to help? Why are you here in Seguin? Why do you want to leave when God brought you here? Sometimes it's like, I don't want to be here. Let's get out of here. But it's the very reason why you're here is because there's something that God wants you to do. Just listen, stop, obey, and say yes to the next thing. But for some of us, it's just a simple thing like, why do you, why do you, why do you love going to children's church? Why do you love being a part of your community group? Why do you love coming here on a Sunday morning when you could be sleeping all night? God's working in you. He's doing that work. He's prompting you. And you're just simply obeying. Just keep doing that. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. You just watch. Little did I know it would lead me to pastor a church. If I would have known then, I would be like, no. But I'm so thankful and so grateful to God that that simple plan that he developed in scripture and the spirit of God that's on the inside of us. It's, it's not that difficult. And that's what Paul is trying to tell the Philippian church. Like, hey, I see what you're doing. Even when I'm absent, man, you're still going for it. Keep that up. There's some leadership there in that, in, that, in, that, uh, in that backdrop there, in that context, that we're having some dissension. So he goes, hey, it's important for us to be unified. It's important for us to be of one accord. Yield to that. And that's when, you see, so after, after, and I'm going to go back to this, this story. After I came to Christ, and after that incident in that faith library, the next thing he asked me to do was to go to um, uh, have a church, to go to be a part of a church, because I wasn't in a local church. I was too scared that Jesus, I read that Jesus was coming back. So I'm like, babe, we're not going anywhere. Jesus is coming. It was that, it was just that innocent type of a deal. But then I, I decided to go find, for, find a church because I needed community in our lives. And so I went first to this, to this uh, they told me, he says, whatever you do, don't go to this church. He says, what church is that? It was called the Gospel Lighthouse. That man thinks that he can walk on water. I'm like, wait, I just read that in the Bible. I want to go meet this guy. And so that's how I got, I just yielded to that, went over there, and that became my amazing, amazing, amazing mentor and pastor for the first few years of my walk with Jesus. He actually said, Marcus, I need you to be a youth pastor. I was like, what is a youth pastor? He goes, just go find youth. I was like, okay. So I made a flyer and I threw flyers all over the place and I had like 175 or so youth come to the first service. He's never had over 75 people in his church. He goes, Marcus, what did you do? I was like, well, I held them all at gunpoint, sir. <laughs> no. He goes, I'll just pass out for you. He said, go get youth. So I just got youth. And I was like, what do I do with all these kids? He goes, oh, you're going to lead worship. It's like, I can't lead worship. He goes, yeah, you're going to lead worship. It's like, oh, man. So he got his accordion out, and I had to lead worship. I just said yes. 75 students left. It's okay, though. All it was was simple obedience. And a lot of times, folks will stop. This is what I meant. Folks will find a church. They'll find a community that they want to be a part of, and they stop growing or because there's hurt in the church. There's shenanigans in the church there's offenses in the church church people are crazy guys did y'all guys know that but that's working it out so when church people that are crazy are rubbing up against you the wrong way what are you going to do are you going to are you going to yield to that moment and go flee to another place where you're going to find another church person like that you'll go that mountain again what he's trying to get you to understand is like hey work this out Work out this salvation. You already have everything you need. Work this out. Next thing you know, you'll be in alignment with God's will. Next thing you know, you'll hear his voice even more clear, and you'll understand. It's like, oh, man, this is beautiful. This is great. All of a sudden, you'll have, like, Natalie. It's like she's sitting there praying 
with a gal on the phone. After the phone hangs up, or right before the phone hangs up, the gal was inspired to write her a $10,000 check. I'm like, what, what in the world? What's happening? Here, go call this person to go pray. I mean, just, just saying yes, there's so much adventure to saying yes. There's fear too, but you do it afraid. You do it afraid anyways. That's what faith is, right? Faith is trusting that God's word said he was going to do this and you yield yourself and he did do that. It's like, well, what if he doesn't? Maybe it wasn't the right timing, but what if he does? And so you just keep saying that. You just keep doing that over and over. He's working in you both to will. Let me just leave with this. Paul, um, do you have that, the apostle Paul, where it says Paul leading? When Paul was being led, it was this simple. When you look at scripture, like Luke's gospel, when Luke wrote the, the book of Luke, you know how he was led to write that? It says, it seemed good to me to write an orderly account. It seemed good to me. The apostle Paul, when he was going different places, missionary places, it says, it seemed good to me to go to Bithynia. It seemed good to me to stop here. It seemed good. To, it's just a seamer. He goes, you have to pay attention to your seamer. Question, what seems good to you to do right now? What, where's that tension? Where's that crossroads you're at? That, that it seems good to you, but you're afraid to do it. Pay attention to those things. Because the desires that were never there all of a sudden get deposited. They're deposited possibly by the Spirit of God. And you sometimes we want to work everything out and figure everything out rather than just obeying that next step. But when you obey the next step, it becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Why? It is God, listen to this, it is God working in you both to will and to do. He not only gives you the willingness, he also empowers you to give action. And that's the amen. <laughs> Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the love that you have for your people. Thank you for the spirit of grace. <clears throat> The spirit that helps us, leads us, and guides us in all truth, Lord God. We're so blessed. We're so full of gratitude for what you're doing in our family. Ask that you be with us this week. Help us a night of worship. Help us to experience you in a special way this year, Lord God. We trust you. We love you in Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed with that said amen. Love you guys. We'll see you Wednesday. We have night of worship. Be here at 7 o'clock. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings. <laughs>